Hi guys, welcome to our channel. Today I am sitting alone here and talking to you. As I have promised you to tell you the story about the India history related to Iran. As I have promised, uh, I have done my quite research and I am telling you from here. Uh, I have done many survey from the different different references and I may be wrong, I may be right. I'm not saying I'm telling everything correctly. This is what I have done the survey and based on that I'm going to tell you some historical relation between Iran and India. And I want to tell you from the thousands of years ago uh, how Iran and India relation ha has started. But first I want to tell you the story of India. So India is a country that has been participated in World War One and World War Two with the millions number of the soldiers, but not willingly, by the force of the British people to take them to Europe to fight with the Germany. It is not really clear if there was not a world war that make British uh, weak when India could have become independent. England won the world war, but there was not left any power to colonize the world and continue the colonization. So after that, India independent voice has been more loud than ever. So Indian people was fighting for the freedom and independence for so long but this time because the British was not able to continue the colonization so the voice of independent and freedom fighter was louder so this means in 1947 in the world map two country has been created as i can say india india has come to the map as a name of india after more than 200 years so again um, i can say the last poison of the british to the in india was making division between the people that's why Pakistan and India has been created otherwise both the land was the same and it could have been a neighborhood of Iran and India and that time I think there was no more Pakistan and I can say it was because of the British the Pakistan was completely new now that means the Pakistan has come from the heart of the India independent new country was four but this huge land with their own people was there for uh, thousands of years it has been a great and powerful empire and culture it has contributed a lot in building a common human culture and important religious like Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam and other religious and here the formation of the India philosophical and spiritual traditions which play a major role and it is very important and very interesting especially for Iranian people because Iran and India was a neighbor for very, very long time. Uh, in, they had a war, they had a cultural uh, and political relationship, they had a lot of commercial relationship together, especially in 20th century and before that. It is, I can say, for thousands of years, India and Iran was neighbor. That's why it is very interesting for Iranian people, this 
history. So it has been an interesting relationship and competition during the different government of Afghanistan and Pakistan. It was a, nowadays between Iran and India, these two countries are in middle. So if you see, uh, Iran and India was a co-founder of non-alliance movement during Cold War in the world. Uh, Iran and India has created non-alliance movement because they didn't want to be a part of the Cold War, neither uh, be allied to the uh, East, East blocs, neither to United States. So they have taken the minimum uh, effect during the Cold War. So these are the story of the future. We don't want to discuss this now. If you're interested, let me know so I can go and uh, make another video for you regarding the present uh, relationship and geopolitical movement of Iran and India regarding the uh, today wars, what is happening, uh, and the many conflicts which has happened past 20, 30 years. And if you can see from the very long time in the modern world, Iran and India had a major role in this part of the world. So in this video, we want to have a first look uh, to the India and this story is very interesting. We are going to look at the story from the thousands of years ago uh, and see the history of one billion and several uh, hundred millions of the people. And they call it 72 nations, 72 religious and empires has come after empires. Uh, kings came after the kings and till reaching the independence of India. So basically India is surrounded, it's a kind of triangle. It is surrounded from the three sides, uh, water and mountain. Basically India has a connectivity with, through the land with the neighbors from the north, east and north west so basically this land why it was so popular because uh, naturally there was a wall which was protecting the india from the attack of the enemies and it uh, those huge mountains was having a lot of supplying a lot of water to this land uh, and having a lot of water resource and fertile land uh, so people could do a lot of agriculture and live peacefully and those times there was no ships so from the other lands come and take a attack to some other land so we are talking about 3500 before uh, Christ like BC 3500 BC so if we look at geographically to this land so we can see uh, how interesting and how good is this land. So the first civiliza civilization has been created in India. We can say one of the oldest or the oldest civilization in the history of the human being has been created in this area. So if you see, uh, we have a Himalaya, lot of water was there. So obviously because of flood and uh, many things uh, the land was so fertile so basically this oldest civilization has been created um, almost in northwest where the gang river is there and valley of indos is there so because of the these two area we can say kind of northwest was the first uh, civilization creation of the human being. There's a wide coastline all over the east and south and the west of India. It is a long seaside which has created the good opportunity for the trade of 
the uh, for the trade of these coastal like business this exchange with the foreigner has naturally had a cultural impact on the coastal area of india so india if you see from the north to the south we have very different type of the climate so uh, for example somewhere like in the north part we have the snow but in the south part we have the uh, mostly rain forest uh, area uh, we have even desert in india so it has always been a very suitable place to live that's why it is one of the first place in the world where an urban civilization was formed one uh, where which is the oldest civilization that we know maybe the oldest one this place was very suitable place for creation of the civilization so 3500 years ago the first civilization has been created in this place so which they had their own script they had their own handwriting they had their own language they had their own urban system they had their own uh, society they had somewhere in but what happened then in somewhere in 1500 bc they have been lost in history they have been disappeared so uh, still people doesn't know what was the reason of this disappearing so it can be like uh, some disease some uh, war which make the society weaken uh, so shortage in food some climate change or can be mix of one of these uh, reasons so this civilization has been disappeared somewhere around 1500 bc but in indus valley civilization was somewhere in west of india and today pakistan it was hundreds of years after the formation of this civilization around 10 to 15th century bc the Ar the aryans uh, enter india of course our information is not accurate in this matter but many people say that more or less than same things some group of aryans from the north west of the caspian sea has moved to the south some aryan has stayed in iran present area of the iran if you see to the map uh, where the caspian sea is in northwest the area has moved from there some stayed in India and some moved to India present India so the Aryans who remain in Iran become Iran Ahura Mazda uh, and, uh, and the Avesta and those who remain in Iran uh, become Iran Ahura Mazda um, the Avesta and those who gone to India become like uh, Brahmins and uh, Sanskrit language and if you see till today uh, the sign of them is still present so these uh, Brahmins which they were the language was uh, Sanskrit they build a society uh, in the presence of the uh, local Indians uh, they build a society they build their own uh, cultural foundation and it's become a, some kind of mixture of the olden civilization with these Aryans who moved to India so it was a kind of mixture of the uh, culture uh, and the new formation of the uh, social system uh, so looking at the world that was established at that time uh, in this land the early sanskrit was spoken the early hindu scriptures were written and the system was established for society of india at that time some of which really today is still exist for example a very important that they did at that time was 
those who were a native of India were put on the lower level or lower caste. Uh, they were told that they are unclean and they kept themselves on a higher level and the higher caste. And for those native, they have given the lower job that they was uh, like thought they were like low job. As system that exists today in India has uh, has a root to those times. In India, the caste system is very serious and rigid social grouping. The Indian caste system is very serious and rigid social grouping. It divides the society into four groups from top to bottom. And then those who are not the part of these four group, they call like unclean or like uh, lower caste. So they, they start from the like those who are the uh, Brahmins, like the top of the, uh, we can say in the top of the, the religious and then it comes to the generals and the kings and it goes to the teachers uh, and teachers, farmers and the fourth class will go to the uh, like those who are working in the temples like that. So these four castes, if I want to name it, it's a quite difficult name. If I say wrong, please correct me. The top was Brahmins, the second was uh, Kshtarya, the third one was Vaishya, the fourth one was Shudra, Shudra, something like that. So I was telling you about the casteism in India and I mentioned four castes and the lower one which will not come in this category. And this caste system in the social is not something that you can change it is inherited you cannot marry another caste uh, now over the year decade legislation civil rights movement and other things have tried to eliminate this but it is still a social problem in indian society so in short the caste system that exists in India today is said to have its foundation when some group of Aryans from North Caspian came here and sent the native of India to very low class and kept themselves in the high caste category. So they are building a new civilization and strong civilization slowly since a few uh, centuries. So in India, we have empires. And now some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Some of them has ruled for a long time. Some of them has a short uh, duration. So it is a very large subcontinent. Some of these empires can take almost all of the Indian subcontinent. It's a very large subcontinent. So we are going to talk about one of the uh, sub, uh, one of the empires, Maurya, Maurya Empire. They are that they are that they were formed between like two hundred to three twenty six BC. They said that they were formed between 200 to 326 BC after Alexander came and uh, destroyed the Achaemenid Empire. They take most of India under their own flag. Who we are talking? Maurya Empire. So they made a large administrative system, building an empire, the same as the Roman Empire with the interesting difference that some private economic institution seems to be operating here 
alongside the government. They've been strong and good at business, doing a business with Greek, doing business um, with the Roman, and they were doing business with many other small, small countries. They were doing business, just a starting trade with Rome, then with Europe. So the European was taking ginger, taking coriander, taking the spices. Since then, India has been the source of spices for the world. Since before Christ, it was during this dynasty that Buddha came a prince who turned his back on the power and the wealth of the world and he became the founder of new religion which now after 2500 years is still accepted and followed by the hundred millions of people it became buddhism empire and one time it became a strategy of avoiding the violence and promoting peace and because of the same avoidance of the violence they fought and the other empire came to the power many of them hindus and they build the empire and same of the same of the other so like some empire was hindu some empire was buddha and in short this is how things have been going on in india for many centuries after the christ sometimes regional local power sometimes unified central power especially in north of subcontinent so until we are reaching the fourth and fifth century after christ for example gupta empire the gupta empire they called the period the golden age of india so of course their rule was over the north of subcontinent but it was unified why do we call gupta empire we jumped from the many other names because the importance of this is that during the period india made great progress in the term of the science astrology medicine and uh, hinduism became became a very widespread classical sanskrit uh, literature was formed india prospered both cultural prosperity and military prosperity what era are we are talking about here we have to zoom out look at the other part of the world so let's see in what time we are what time as of at the same time in india what is happening in the other part of the world let's zoom out and see what is happening in the other part of the world for example in iran there is a sasanian empire going on in the west of iran there is a byzance empire which is uh, some part of the olden roman empire so the roman empire was covered entire uh, mediterranean sea so in that part the roman empire has fallen so the europe has been ruled uh, by a smaller uh, power which is uh, running the every corner of the europe with a smaller power so let's go back to india now we are understanding where exactly we are so so far what we have seen about the history of india is that groups comes they rule they go if the, those empires are powerful they remain for a maybe 100 years maybe 200 years so what we are going to talk now is mostly india was under attack from the north part or northwest if that group was attacking was strong they was taking the control if not they were only fighting and going back again so now if it's 
power is great it will take the entire subcontinent if not it will take only the upper half of it under its own rule the next earthquake in the history of india will again be the arrival of the new group from the same northwest who are they the muslims when around eight centuries islam came from the land of the same that area of present pakistan and today afghanistan and punjab and the next to indus river and slowly some people become muslim there mahmud ghaznavi and the other warrior who had opened the way to india and were continuously attacking from like kabul and the punjab and from 1005 after uh, christ the first of the 11th century like mm, to thousand from 1005 to 1027 during the sultan mahmud ghaznavi he attacked north india 15 times both for trophies and for converting the hindus to muslim and buddhism also to muslim so actually he was using the force for converting the people and really in the same way islam was growing very slowly the, the buddhism and the hindus were decreasing in those area like in present afghanistan and present pakistan we are talking so the hinduism and buddhism was reducing and the muslim community was increasing mostly was by force in those days so and they were destroying the sign of the buddhism and Hindu, hinduism like destroying the temple destroying the statues like uh, if you see the when the taliban came to the power they have destroyed the buddha statue in afghanistan this we are not talking about thousand years back we are talking about the present which same thing happened in afghanistan the buddha statue the face has been destroyed and with these attacks of course they did not establish any government there but they were attacking continuously when this is belongs to 10th to 11th century which means that those who attack a lot still do not have any region in their hand as a, like a forming a government or something like that they were attacking continuously when this is belongs to 10th to 11th century which means that those who attack a lot still do not come to this region so we have not reached the period of uh, mongols this is a period in which there is another important things that connect iran to india abu rehan biruni he was very in interested and he was very interested in india he has traveled a lot to India. He has studied a lot about the astrology in India, about the medicine, medical treatment in India. He uh, even wrote many books uh, regarding India. One of his uh, book called Research of Hind. So he wrote it in Arabic also. He discussed a lot with Indian philosopher. He learned even Sanskrit. He translated an important book as if it were into Arabic. And in short, he played an important role in culture exchange of that period. And his observation and his writing are still a source of research today. So now, we reach to 12th to 13th century sooner or later 
the Mongol Mongolians will be found during the years 12th to 13th century. Different Mongolian generals from the different region were attacked India several times. Some were successful, some were less successful, uh, like that. And at the same time, Islam also was spreading slowly in India. So it is possible that in the 13th century, in 1206, the Muslim captured Delhi. The first Muslim government in India was established in the name of Delhi uh, Sultanate. Islam officially ruled over many places in India with the force mostly. Indian in that period, even today, Islam is still one of the major religions in India. Of course, all of those who became Muslim in India by force had a Muslim ruler who was not prone to bloodshed and destruction. And late, when the Islam became mixed, Islam was a foreign culture for them. But later on, when it is mixed with Indian culture and Indian Islamic fusion culture were created from which very important Sufis came perhaps the most famous of them is Nizamuddin Olia and perhaps the very important Sufi came from that school for a period of several centuries and once again the unified government we don't have in India, we have a piecemeal government. We have a small political uh, units. Then a big powerful Islamic empire will be created in India called as a Gurkhan empire, Mughal empire. Now we say is Islamic. In fact, they were a kingdom of Mongol descent. Now we say is Islamic. In fact, they were a kingdom of Mongol race, but it became Muslim. So they were Mongolians who attacked Iran and other parts. They are from that dynasty. So they become a Muslim. First, Temur Gurkhani invaded India in the 14th century. He came to Delhi and he massacred and plundered and then he came back. After the descendant of this Temurid, who was named Babur, came from Kabul and then dominated the India from 1526 when they started to rule in India until 1857. So here our part one is finished. So you have seen a different Muhammad today, very serious Muhammad. <laughs> so what we have here, uh, we have uh, spoken about a lot of uh, history past thousands of years. I hope you like this video. You give like, comment, and if you are not subscribed our channel yet, please subscribe and follow our other uh, social media channel in, in Instagram and with the same name. As I have said in the beginning, uh, this is a kind of documentary. So uh, I'm not 100% right. So this is a kind of history. Someone will say something else, someone will say something different things. So uh, still the uh, movement of Aryan from the Northwest of the uh, nor, northwest of the Caspian Sea to India till today uh, they are debating on that. So some people say no, some people say yes. So as I said, this is a kind of documentary. Uh, so please, if any mistake, any thing else you need me to do research, uh, please comment below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like me to make a chapter two, uh, 
so I think we have more knowledge of this part of India till today there is a more document there is more books there is more information so we can make a better video for you thank you very much hope you're doing well